Dear natural ladies, I'm trying to let my sides grow for a new style. In the meantime, don't miss the message word about my hair. I promise you my edges are fine. I am back with another video. And the purpose of this video is to talk about red flags while dating or in relationships to avoid prolonged years of toxic relationships because red flags show up early in relationships. A lot of us don't want to pay attention to it. So the question here is, how did you miss the red flags in the beginning? And the simple answer to that question is because you fell in love with the idea of a relationship or you wanted him, that particular person, so bad, you see? And so when you go into dating or in a relationship with a need or lack thereof, <laughs> you can miss a whole lot of things, you know? You can miss a whole lot of things when you in need, when you thirsty, when you craving, and I want it so bad. Just give it to me. I don't care. I don't care what it is. Just give it to me. Just give me my, my wedding. <laughs> I ain't never been married before my biological clock is ticking. Just give me, give me, give me. And then you'll miss it and then you'll end up getting married and it, it don't turn out to be your happily ever after like you had wanted it to. But you married. You wanted it. You got what you wanted. <laughs> so to avoid that, we... can avoid that by kind of like slowing down that momentum and finding peace in the now. In this right now moment, finding peace in this moment, right here, right now. Because if you are so excited to get there, you could be blinded along the journey. I remember a long time ago, there was this guy. There was this guy. And if you saw this guy right here in this room today, you'd be like, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. He's dark skinned, dead, bald headed, tall, you know, the tall, dark and handsome kind of look, you know, with the six pack kind of build you know the muscles all that anyway don't get caught up on the phone look it's it's it's, it's, it's really oh that's another video anyway um so you would say oh he looks on the physical really really good together he put together really good okay that's all nice and dandy but the day before New Year, the night, New Year's Eve, rather, I was leaving out, and this particular tall, dark, and handsome person came over. We were both about to leave to go separate ways, but he just wanted you to see me, right? And so I'm almost dressed. I was like, "Wait, I'm just getting get myself. We can walk out. Let me go put on my other shoe." And he come in and his ways you know i know men have their ways when they're in the head in their head and they're thinking you know they might come off as moody but this dude here he always had issues about even simple things that would really just make him so disgruntled like and i was like um he's like what are you doing i was like i can't find my other shoe i'm trying to find my other boot i had one on and one off and i was fully dressed all i had to do was get that boot and my key and we go walk out to together he was like hurry up that's how he said it like angry like yelling in masculine tone hurry up well that was a good masculine tone but anyway and so <laughs> and so i was like oh no that's okay let me let you out right now and so i walked to the front door you know wobbling to you know the front door with one boot because it was a boot it was a heel and I was like, I unlocked the door and I was like, okay, good night. And I turned around and he was really tall. Well, everybody's told me I'm only five two. So when I turned around, he, my face was like in his 
stomach, like right underneath, like his chest, like, and he was like, you know, like on me, like, right. And he said to me, as long as you live, don't you ever talk to me like that. And in my mind, I was like, dang, what did I do? But there was this peace, this calmness that came over me. My higher self said, shut up. And I just shut up. <laughs> I just listened. Now the door was open. I listened. I didn't even look up, mind you, this is his chest light. And I just, like kind of like turned my head like to look outside the door. And he walked out. I thought nothing of it. I thought nothing of it, I really didn't. I blocked him though. <laughs> I was in the blocking stage of life and I blocked him. I went and got my boot, put my other boot on, I got my keys, and I went to my little party. And about two weeks later, this particular person called me from another phone line. He said he had been kind of trying to reach me. He's like, what, you don't want to deal with me no more? And I said, no, I don't. <laughs> he was, I was like, I don't know what it is, but something just not right with you. Oh no, something just, just not right. Nah. I don't think we could work out. No. He was like, Yeah, I see. I watched you. I see that you um you went out to that party that same night. You you left right after. I was like, Yeah, you didn't stop my night. But I'm about to stop us. <laughs> And he was basically asking for another chance. I was like, oh no, I don't think, no, I don't, I don't think we can do that. <laughs> now, I ain't never been nobody punching bag. That was the closest I have ever been to masculine energy raising up to me before. But this was in my mind going to be the last time that I experienced that because I just don't want to experience that. And so he said to me, you know, the reason why we couldn't go out on such and such night is because, yeah, the judge had appointed that I go to anger management classes that night. But I'm working on myself. Give me another chance. Like, and I'm thinking to myself, boy, look, you should have never told me that. Because <laughs> now you get negative chances. Anyway. So, I'm saying that because... The anger that I felt and experienced that particular night was a red flag. And his attitude in, on previous petty situations was a red flag too. So in hindsight, I saw the signs. I saw the red flags. And when I saw them, I was able to get away from that before I became emotionally engaged with this guy. Now see, some women, their need for the relationship would have been a little bit greater than mine. Be like, oh my gosh, he's so handsome and he's so dark and oh my God, he came over to see me before I went to the party. Mm -mm. Because my desire for him nor my idea of a relationship became more important than how a person treats me. And at that moment in my journey, I wasn't looking for no relationship. I had already been married. So, so do you want it so bad that you, you're missing the signs of him being angry with you? Do you want it so bad that you're missing all of the lies? Do you want it so bad that you will ignore when he iffed at you? Oh, he was just angry that day. <laughs> Do you want it so bad that you will ignore the fact that uh, he gave you his, his Google number instead of his real number? <laughs> 
Do you want it so bad that you'll put up with him rushing you into having sex on the first day? Do you want it so bad that when he's broke and asking you for money that you give it to him? Do you want it so bad that you're going to just ignore his inconsistency so he can just disappear and show up in your life and whenever he wants to just drop it in and out? Do you want it that bad? Do you want it so bad that you miss all of the red flags? Because your idea of a relationship was so great. And then you get it. You get it and then you get stuck or caught rather into this web. What you would call a relationship. And it's not what you saw on Lifetime. It's not what you saw on the Hallmark Channel. So now you feel disappointed. Now you're saying this is not the happily ever after that I long for. Now you're saying 35 years later, I didn't know that he was like this. Because you wanted it so bad. So, a person could look on the outside like a good catch, y'all. They could look like a good catch. <laughs> but if their actions aren't in alignment with what your expectations are, you should be accountable for your actions moving forward and what you take from that particular person and whether or not you stay or leave because the, the next move is yours. They're, they acted, but the next move is yours. You have a choice to make and sometimes our choices, we just be signing up. We, we just be in, in it for the idea of love sometimes as women. Just the idea of it. Because it started off as a little girl with the little Barbies. And then we was doing tea time. <laughs> and then we was playing house and doctor and nursing. And then we were doing the hair. We mature so fast and we get caught up into all of these scenes. And we become so... So caught up into that idea. That idea that we see everywhere. That same idea will have some women feeling a lack thereof when they are single. Because their idea of a relationship is not what they're experiencing in their right now. And something has to be wrong with that. Because all their life, they was thinking about that idea. They was creating that idea. They dwell on that idea. And in dwelling on that idea, you create resistance from even experiencing that idea. Because then you wanting it more and more and more and more. It's running away from you. Because you're sending a signal to the universe. I don't have it. But I don't have it. But I am single. But it is not here right now. But I am not in a relationship. But I am not married. But I do not have a partner. I am alone. I am single. I am not married. Don't you know I am? That I am? Whatever you say that you are, then you shall be. It is law. <laughs> and you say it all the time. I'm single. I'm single. I'm single. I'm single. How can you be single in a multi-dimensional, plural universe? <laughs> How can you be single? One is the loneliest number that you ever do. What I'm saying to you, lifetimers and whole mud watchers, first of all, and foremost, is that 
The happily ever after that you are longing for does not exist outside of you. It only exists inside of you. But you gotta go in to get it. Sometimes we have such a big void inside of us that we are trying to fill it up with a car. We're trying to fill it up with a man. We'll try to fill it up with a job. We'll fill it up with a house. We'll fill it up with something exciting, a trip. We'll fill it up with boobs. We'll fill it up with a fags. We just filling stuff up. Looking in love for all the in all the wrong places, outside of ourselves, trying to find love. But see this void, when you don't know yourself, this void is so chaotic. This void is dark energy. Dark energy is a chaotic place if, if you don't, you've ever been inside of it and made peace in the midst of the storm of it. It's chaotic. So nobody don't want to go inside of there and make peace and in, in that chaotic mess and bring peace to it and bring love to it and bring joy to it. How am I supposed to do that all by myself? Wait, and then after I bring peace and love and joy and bliss and all these things, then I can meet God in it? You mean to tell me I can meet God in the midst of the storm, of the midst of the chaos in here? Looking for love in all the wrong places outside of you will mess you up. Thinking that love or your so-called happily ever after is supposed to be what we saw on Lifetime. Let me tell you, and I don't mean to bust your little bubble, but that little Lifetime, that little Hallmark thing, it don't exist in the physical reality. Life is what you make it. Your marriage is going to be what you make it. Your relationship is going to be what you make it. If you ain't in love with yourself single, you will not be in love with yourself married. If you ain't in love with yourself in the hood, you will not be in love with yourself when you get your new house with your picket fence and your dog. <laughs> if you ain't in love with yourself when your ass sagging and your titties flapping, you are not going to be in love with yourself when you get that boob job and that nice ass. You're just not. You're just not. Because all of these things are examples of things that are outside of you. You have to go inside of you to find real love. <laughs> See, that's how you, you wanted the matrix to be set up. <laughs> so one day that you'll get tired of looking for these things outside of you and you just decide to come on inside. Just give up on all of that. Corona time is the perfect time to just come on inside. Because you can't go outside without a mask. Just come on inside. And find love. Come on inside and find God. Because the kingdom of God is within you. And so it's a perfect time to focus on the relationship with yourself, with our self, with our eternal self that lives on lifetime after lifetime. Because it's that, that very relationship that will send you a signal. <laughs> Here's the beautiful thing. It's that relationship that sends you the signal that, wait, something is off with this person. Wait, hold up. There's a red flag here. No, 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 no. This is your higher self talking to you. No, no, don't, 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 don't. We don't want to go that way. <laughs> I'm, I'm sending you a signal. I know you don't, don't, don't know me really well, but I'm just your higher self. And I just love you with unconditional love. Yeah. I'm the future you. He whispered in your ear saying, wait, that, that, that just don't. I don't feel like love. Even though you probably don't know love at its totality just yet, but I whisper in your ear every now and then and tell you, wait, wait, hold. 
you feel in that emotion because you're not in alignment with yourself. If you get in alignment with yourself, I'll show you what love is. I'll show you what love is. So you get those red flags when you fall. When you fall in love. But it feels so good when you grow in love instead. When you grow in love, when you grow in love with your higher self, it feels so good. Growing always feels better than, than falling. Because falling, you, you got to get back up. But when you're growing, you, you're evolving. And you're becoming. You're becoming love. You're in alignment with love. And then guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Then, then, you, then you start meeting people <laughs> that don't have the red flags no more. Because <laughs> they're not up here. They're not up here. No, they're not up here. They're down there. They're down there. Here growing. The red flag people, they not up here with the growers. Mm, it feels so good up here. It feels so good up here. In here. When you're in alignment with yourself. It's like bobbing and weaving from all of the red flags that come with relationship because, oh, I love myself. You know how they say, miss me with the bull crap? That's, that's, how, those, that's how those people that, that, that send red flags, oh, you miss them. They was on, they, you was going to make groceries, they, you was on this aisle, and oh, they turned on the next aisle. <laughs> the only people that's going to be on your aisle is going to be on the, the, the growing in love type energy. And they're gonna be they're gonna be saying, Oh hey, how you doing? And you're gonna be like, hey, I'm doing fine too. Because everybody growing in, in your universe. Because that's what you're attracting now. Just consider, just consider falling in love with yourself. If you're experiencing a whole bunch of red flags in men. Because really that's an indicator of letting you know what what frequency you are on. Because of all the men in your physical reality, ain't shit. Sorry. You vibrating on that frequency too. From my heart to yours, baby. Vibrate higher so you can experience the love of God. Be blessed.